A bunch of new conflicting data has just come out for the month of February for real estate prices across America. Now you guys know my opinion about the real estate market, the housing market, a potential crash, whether it's a good time to buy or sell, but I always want to make sure that I'm presenting all forms of data, all sides to the argument that I can find, specifically because this is probably one of my most controversial positions. Very few people agree with me about this. Right now we are seeing the gains in home prices have weakened and fallen to their lowest year over year rate in a very long time. But in an odd sign of strength, we are seeing more US home buyers paying with cash than we have seen in years, almost a decade. Okay, so it's no surprise that home price gains are slowing down. Year over year data came in for January and showed that home prices in December were 5.8% higher than the previous December. Whereas the month of November showed a 7.6% year over year gain. So prices were still rising year over year, but rising at a slower pace but it's not as if prices have not yet been falling. It's just that that data hasn't shown up in the year over year data yet because home prices topped out in June of 2022 so far, and on average, they're down 4.4% since their peak in June. Now, 4.4% is far from the crash that many people have been, number one, predicting, forecasting, but number two, just very eagerly anticipating. There are a lot of people who are just frothing at the mouth waiting for real estate prices to crash. And regardless of who you ask, most people would say 4.4% is far from a crash, especially considering they peaked in June and what pricing, what affordability rather has done during that time. Mortgage rates right now are at six and a half percent. And if we go back one year ago, interest rates were all the way down at under 4% which means that anybody who's been waiting on the sidelines for the last year is in a worse position. Yes, prices are a little bit lower, but the mortgage payment on that house will still be much higher because the mortgage interest rates are much higher. And depending on how you measure it, 4.4% might be a little bit of an overestimate as one measure is showing that they're only down 2.7% from the peak. Now, because of this increase in mortgage rates, we have actually seen a huge spike in cash buyers. And this is not institutional buyers. All cash home sales were at their highest level since 2013 in the United States. And again, the percentage of these deals from institutional investors is actually down. Data shows that most of these transactions are from people who have retired or people who have sold a more expensive home somewhere in the country, and they're using that to make a purchase in a cheaper area somewhere else. And given the fact that institutional investors are not buying as much right now, there's not as much competition in the market for these cash buyers. They're actually able to snag the deals that they want. First, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, I Trust Capital. Today, people are concerned about the purchasing power of their dollars being eroded due to inflation. They're concerned about the returns they're getting on their traditional portfolios, things like stocks and bonds. Many people want to be able to purchase investments that will preserve their purchasing power, things like gold, silver, Bitcoin, ways to store the value of your money without being exposed to the dollar. What's the problem with this? The problem is that most people have most of their wealth in their 401ks, their employer's retirement accounts. And these accounts do not allow people to buy gold, silver, or Bitcoin. Some of them allow access to ETFs that have exposure to these prices, but number one, you're introducing many layers of counterparty risk. And number two, you don't actually own the asset itself. That's where I Trust Capital comes in. I Trust Capital allows you to open up actual retirement accounts, IRAs, traditional and Roth. You can even roll over funds from a previous employer's retirement account to fund this. You can buy gold, you can buy silver, you can buy Bitcoin and even other cryptocurrencies with I Trust Capital. And if you sign up with my link in the description below, you'll get $100 worth of Bitcoin as a signup bonus 
for opening the account. Now, given the fact that housing affordability is arguably at its worst level it's ever been, at least according to Goldman Sachs, we're seeing housing affordability at the lowest level since this data was being collected. That doesn't necessarily indicate a bubble. People are looking purely at price and saying prices are so high that clearly prices must come down. And unfortunately, the world just does not work that way. Even comparing the average home price compared to the median income does not tell the full story. Again, that just points to price, saying that most people could not afford to buy a home today. Does that tell you that home prices must come down drastically in the future? Unfortunately, it does not. That may be true, but that data alone cannot tell you that. You always have to ask the question, why? Why are prices so high? For instance, before the financial crisis, prices were so high because people were buying homes with adjustable rate mortgages and had two or three homes and were banking on the fact that those homes would go up in price so that they could sell them to somebody else or so that they could refinance and get out of that adjustable rate mortgage. But when everybody's doing that, there's a massive supply and demand mismatch. And yeah, there's euphoria. Prices are going to collapse from that. But we have a very different situation today. Very few people have adjustable rate mortgages. Very few people have more than just their personal residence. And most people, their personal residence, they have a mortgage rate at two and a half or 3% or three and a half percent. That will be the very last thing they will ever let go of if push comes to shove. They simply cannot afford to buy that new house because housing affordability is the worst it's been in a very long time or maybe ever, which means they can't afford to lose their current home. And in one more measure, we have to ask how expensive housing is based on more objective factors other than the dollar. And if we take a look at the long-term ratio of real estate versus gold, we can see this ratio is at a long-term low. When the chart is high, this means that it takes a lot of gold to be able to buy real estate. Real estate is expensive when priced in gold. When this chart is at the bottom, it means real estate is cheap in terms of gold. It does not take a lot of gold to buy a single family house. If we zoom into since the 70s where there's more data, we can see uh, high and low points marked at 1971 at the top, 1980 at a bottom, 2001 at a top, and 2011 at a bottom. In the late 60s, early 70s, home prices were very expensive compared to gold, meaning that you would have wanted to sell real estate and use that to buy gold. Over the course of the next decade, the gold price skyrocketed, fixing this ratio. In 1980, it bottomed, indicating that real estate was cheap again compared to gold, and you would have wanted to use your gold to buy more real estate. Over the next two decades, the price of real estate increased relative to the price of gold. And from the years 2000 through about 2005, real estate was very expensive compared to gold. You would have wanted to sell your real estate and use that money to buy gold. By 2011, this had bottomed again and you would have wanted to sell your gold to buy real estate. And yes, this ratio has increased since it bottomed in 2011. But as we can see from the long-term chart, we are nowhere near expensive real estate in terms of gold. Assuming we return to somewhat of an average, historically speaking, considering the real estate to gold ratio, we would expect this chart to move up, not down. And if this chart moves up, that happens one of two ways. Either real estate continues to get a lot more expensive and gold doesn't change, or the price of gold comes down. Now, most people that I know that are saying real estate prices are gonna crash, do not think that the gold price is also going to crash. And given the supply and demand mismatch and all of the people who are locked in at such low interest rates, and given the fact that if we ever see those low interest rates again, that's just going to stimulate more house buying, I do not see a mechanism right now that will contribute to a real estate crash, especially 
priced in gold. And if you don't think that gold is going to crash faster than real estate, then you would probably not expect to see a return to the average, a reversion to the mean for the real estate to gold ratio. You would instead be expecting this chart to drop drastically. As always, really appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.